Hey everyone, today I'm here to share with you a finished pair of socks, my coastal pullover progress, and also a weaving project in progress. So let's get started. This is Pineapple Knits, a video cast about knitting, spinning, weaving, and other fiber arts. You can connect with me on social media at Pineapple Yarn, and you can connect with me on my website at pineappleyarn.com. Thank you so much for joining me again, and if this is your first time joining, welcome. I am a all around crafter from the coast of South Carolina. I live here with my husband and a house full of kids and crafting brings me sanity and enjoyment in my life as I'm sure it does with you too. So thanks for joining and for all those who are joining again, thank you so much for coming back. And yeah, so it's been a really great week here. Uh, we definitely have taken a turn into fall here on the coast. It's so beautiful. Uh, we've had cooler weather. The other morning I woke up and it was 70 degrees, which is unheard of. <laughs> um, we're having the, I guess the remnants of Tropical Storm Sally kind of blow through. So unfortunately we lost our fall-like weather and we're kind of experiencing a lot of humid, rainy weather, but it's fine. I am totally happy with it. It's, it was nice to have a break from the, the summer, even though I love summer so much, but it's kind of nice to see a change of seasons. But yeah, so like I mentioned, I have a finished pair of socks to share with you today. These are, uh, a pair of socks that I cranked on my sock machine, which is an Erlbacher Gerhardt Speedster. Uh, it's a great machine. I love, love cranking socks. <laughs> it's really fun. And um, hopefully one of these days I will get a video up just showing the process of it. Um, I know the first time that I you know, I was really unfamiliar with circular sock machines and I started watching how people actually did it and it was so cool. I love, I still love watching the process and watch other people <laughs> crank their socks. Um, but this is, uh, the yarn is my, my yarn, pineapple yarn in the colorway candy corn. And so as you can see, it is kind of a tan or beige background and it has tons of speckles all over. So there are yellow and orange and brown and kind of a moss green. This is just a really, really autumnal colorway. And um, I may have a few skeins in the shop right now, but I definitely will have some next Friday uh, during the shop update. But yeah, I have been just waiting to wear these. <laughs> but I wanted to show you first here on the show. Um, I'm showing these on my cool sock blockers. These are my lucky sock blockers from uh, Marsha of Knitting Left and she uh, makes these sock blockers here in South Carolina. So it's kind of fun to support another, uh, another small business here in the South. But um, the way that I crank my socks, I crank them all about the same, is I start from the top down and I crank 20 rows and uh, then do a hung hem, which is just a folded hem on top. And then I, I think on these I made them a little longer. Normally I crank 50 rows. I think I did maybe 55 rows. I did a short row heel, which is exactly like a short row heel when you hand it. And then I cranked 65 rounds down and then did a short row toe. So if you're familiar with short row heels and toes, kind of like German short rows, um, it's basically the same method. It's really, really cool. So the parts of this sock that I have to hand finish, um, it doesn't come off the machine like this. <laughs> But what I do have to finish is, um, it's usually one long tube with kind of heels and toes here and there. 
And so what I have to do is separate all the, separate the pair and then tuck in, um, there's a, uh, I guess the beginning piece of yarn here. And so I tuck that in and then I just go down to the toe and I actually have to do, it's like a Kitchener stitch, but it's, I, I, it's basically the same. It's a grafting stitch and that's what I do on my toe. And that just makes a really seamless look. And the seam is actually on top of your toes. So it's not at the tip of your toes. Um, it's almost like where your toes meet your foot. I guess that's where the seam would be. But yeah, I thought it turned out really, really pretty. And I am looking forward to adding them to my sock stash. <laughs> Before I get too far into the podcast, I was so excited to show my socks that I forgot to mention what I'm wearing today. This is my banana leaf shawl by Yuki Ueda, and I knit this, I think at the beginning of this year, I finished it up, but this is knit from my 2019 advent calendar. So you can see um, this was day one, and then this is very, very long, so it's actually looped around two times. And then this is day 24, ended up in this white. So um, I loved dyeing this up. I, I dyed it in a gradient, just like this year's advent calendar will be dyed in a gradient. So when you knit it up, it just has these beautiful color changes. But this was a really fun project. If you want more info, um, I do have a Ravelry project page all about it, <laughs> showing the full shawl. And I'm also drinking a cup of tea today. This is a uh, stash tea in the blueberry super fruit, I think is what it's called. It is so delicious. Um, I'm pretty sure I included this in the advent calendar last year, but it's super flavorful and super fruity. So um, yeah, if you're into that, I highly recommend this flavor. <laughs> All right, so I wanna move on and share with you my next work in progress or my first work in progress, I should say. Uh, this is the Coastal Pullover by Hannah Fettig. And as you can see, I am nearly finished with the body at this point. Um, this is a top-down raglan sweater. It has this gorgeous cable motif all over. So front and back and the sleeves will all be this just really, really gorgeous cable motif. And um, I'm knitting this with uh, a new yarn that I added. Um, I'm not sure how long I will have this. It's, it's kind of a special dyed to order uh, base, but it is from Pineapple Yarn. It's a two ply merino and baby alpaca worsted weight yarn. And it has been so, wonderful to knit with, um, not only because it's just super soft and it has this gorgeous two-ply texture, which just really adds to the texture of the cable, but then also it has just a very slight halo from the merino and it's gorgeous. Um, it is a little time consuming doing the cable. Uh, it's very intuitive, this pattern is. It's very simple doing the cable. I'm not using a cable needle at all. Um, but you know, it just slows you down a little bit doing a cable, just kind of, it's not as fast as stocking it. Um, but the neat thing is, is that doing this in a worsted weight yarn, it really is going quite quickly. So as you can see, the body's almost knit. I think I've done maybe a row or two of the rib at this point. So I'm going to do a couple of inches ribbing and then start working on the sleeves. I am using a size four and six needles, which are a size smaller than called for in the pattern. And I did do a gauge swatch at the beginning, <laughs> uh, which is great because I ended up doing a size larger than I think I would normally. Um, and I'm glad I did that because I've been trying it on and it's pretty snug. So I can't even imagine what it would be with the smallest the smallest size. And I'm not really into super tight sweaters. It's just not really, uh, not really my thing. So 
we'll see. I'm sure the cable will block out a little bit and give me a little more room. Um, but so far, so good. I'm Even if it stays this size, I will be happy, but it's a very fitted sweater. So we'll see. It has been really fun to knit up though. And, um, and to get that much of the body done in, when did I start it? I know I started it, I think I started at the beginning of September. So I'm really, really happy about that and making good progress. Um, unlike a lot of people, I actually don't have a problem with sleeves. <laughs> like there's no, no real sleeve island for me, um, especially the second sleeve. I feel like it goes so fast. And so I'm actually looking forward to the sleeves. I think it'll go by really, really quickly. <laughs> The next uh, work in progress I wanted to share with you is a weaving project that I've been working on a little bit. And it is another set of dishcloths. <laughs> so this is a really, really fun pattern. It's um, thick textured dishcloths, I believe. I'll put all the info below. But let me show you what I did. You can probably see it best on this. What I did is I am using um, Knit Picks Dishy, which is a worsted weight, 100% cotton yarn. And I warped my loom in stripes and my seven-year-old picked out the colors and um, kind of helped me with the pattern. And so what we did is we just did even rows of white and then a gold, which is a creme brulee, I believe it is what it's called, a light pink, I can't remember the exact name of that. Uh, a deep teal, which is called, can't remember that either. I will look it up and put it all in the notes below. So those four colors, the white, gold, pink, and teal are the ones that um, I, I warped the loom with. And then I just played with the weft. I did solid colors, I did some stripes, and so this is kind of the result. So the first um, dishcloth here, it, I actually wove with the gold. And so this is the result. And it looks like I did gold and then I did this border with the white. And so what I do with these, this looks like a really long scarf. <laughs> it's very, very long, but what you do is you just, you weave eight, I can get eight dishcloths in all at once, and you, in between each one, like at the very beginning and the very end of each one, you're using a crochet cotton, a number three crochet cotton, just to um, provide for the selvage, I guess. This gets machine stitched and then folded over into a hem, and then washed and dried and it really plumps up and fills in all the gaps and it looks beautiful once it's washed and dried. But what I did with this one is I did white selvages and then the gold. And this next one I used um, all teal for the weft and so you can see the difference between the gold and the teal it really makes a neat change I think. The next one I did all white and then the next one I did all pink <laughs> and so I did all four colors at the very beginning and then once I kind of saw um, what all four colors look like solid I started doing some stripes and so this one I did um, I think I did all the, an even number of stripes. And so the rows, I should say, I'm looking at it now to see. I'm pretty sure I did, even though it doesn't look even right here because of the gold and the pink, they kind of blend together um, on the screen anyway. But that was a really pretty plaid cloth and that was kind of fun to do. And then it looks like I did another white one and the reason I did that is because uh, this was dishcloth number five. And then after I did that, I was using some other dishcloths that I had knit up. And if you recall from several um, videos ago, 
I had knit some at the beach that were like a black and white twist. It was the dishy twist, black and white, gorgeous yarn. I loved just that um, graphic contrast of the black and white. But <laughs> even after washing and drying those dishcloths several times, um, they shed all over the place. And so when I am wiping the counters down, I still get little linty black pieces of the yarn, which is, you know, maybe in time that will go away, but um, it's just kind of strange. And I don't know if it's the dishy twist. I'd never used that yarn before. So I don't know if it's that particular yarn. And so anyway, I was a little, even though I love this deep uh, teal color, I was a little hesitant to do another cloth that's all this deep teal, just in case I have the same problem with the, um, shedding i guess like the dishy twist does of the black and white um so anyway so then i went and did another white cloth and i did one that is has kind of a pink selvage with white and then the last one is just kind of random all over <laughs> because i had shuttles that had uh you know a little bit of teal a little bit of gold and so i just did random stripes and used up all of the yarn on my shuttles so yeah i was really happy to get this done it is a lot of weaving but it goes by really quickly because it's such a thick yarn and it's such a small loom so this is um, woven on my 10 inch Kromsky presto loom that i purchased back in July. And this will be the second set of dishcloths I have woven up on this. This is a waffle weave. And so you have this gorgeous texture and it really looks neat with all the different colors in it when you do that waffle weave. But, um, it's a rigid heddle loom, and so it's not like um, sometimes what you think about a loom with, um, you know, the treadles, or, you know, it's not a giant loom, it's a little loom with a little heddle, and it works awesome. And in order to do these uh, more complicated patterns, like a waffle weave, I say complicated, it's not complicated at all. You just use a pickup stick, and it's just a stick that you turn on one side, and you know, every certain number of rows, you just turn it on its side. It lifts up a few uh, strands of the warp and it makes a really great texture. So yeah, I've been super happy with that. And um, I've really been trying to hone my knowledge, hone my skills with this small loom. It's very limited what you can do with it, but um, I've had a really great time with it and it's taught me so much about weaving. I am a brand new knit weaver. I've only woven for maybe, I mean, since July. <laughs> so just a couple of months. But um, with every project, I can see myself getting better and better and I'm making less mistakes. And yeah, so it's turned out really well. But I will show you these. Um, I'll show you these when I actually finish them and I'll show you what the, the edge looks like folded over and sewn and everything. So yeah, this was really fun to finish up. And um, the reason I wanted to get into weaving is because I wanted to do some more home projects. I'm, I'm not really interested in making fabric for clothing or anything like that, or even scarves. I really just wanna make home projects. So um pillow covers and table, you know, um, placemats, <laughs> table runners, things like that. Um, down the road, I'd love to jump into dish towels and other projects like that. So yeah, so that's been really fun. And I do have one acquisition that I'm gonna share with you. Um, I was, so, I guess a while back, several weeks ago, Hedgehog Fibers um, sent out a notice that they were going to be having a Lucky Dip fiber sale. And uh, Hedgehog Fibers, their Lucky Dip is kind of their one-of-a-kind 
tester leftover type skeins or in this case fiber and I was so excited because I'd never seen them have their fiber for sale like this and so I bought uh, two bags <laughs> of the fiber each bag is 250 grams so it's quite a bit of fiber I ended up with 500 grams and so if you haven't um, received yours yet if you purchased it uh, just go ahead and skip ahead but for the rest of you, here it is. So it comes in a giant bag like this and it is full of color. I mean, you can see the magenta here. There's some Kelly green here and you can really see the color on the back, gorgeous. And the coolest thing is about this, I guess I just didn't realize what it was going to be. Um, I thought it was going to be 250 grams of one braid or maybe two braids this is all different fibers so we have merino and tweed and i know there's some like camel silk in here i mean there is so much so many different kinds of fiber and it is so amazing i have to open this up and show you so it's really fun so as i pull this out i have to say this is gorgeous. This piece is this vibrant blue purple and it has little white tweedy bits in it. I love that. <laughs> I won't show you all the pieces because there's quite a bit, but here's another piece that is really, really pretty. This has like, this has rust and definitely smells wooly so it has a bit of texture it's not super rustic but it's gorgeous actually now that i feel it this might be a bfl it's very very pretty but um you know great feel i love spinning this up actually might be a cordale too you know that's what it is it's cordale <laughs> but I'll, you know just as an example of these colors they are gorgeous together so saturated and interesting um, some of these i recognize from clubs so these might be leftovers dyed from clubs uh, which is great because i have pictured doing something really big for club or big with all of my hedgehog fiber clubs i'd love to spin up a larger project with all of them uh, this is an example of what I thought maybe was a camel silk. This is very uh, drapey and soft and it kind of has that downiness of a camel, but then the, you know, the drapiness of a silk and then with some dye here and there. And this is one that I thought might be from a club. This is a gorgeous tweed it looks like it has some recycled sari silk in it um, it looks like it has been dyed on maybe a gray or a gray blue base and then it just has pops of color so that's really pretty it feels like a merino it's really nice so there's that and i could go on and on i mean there are so many bits of fiber this feels like that camel silk again this is the same tweed with the gray um, blue base and the recycled sari silk. So yeah, I am just, I was super excited about this. This looks like kind of a traditional tweed. It looks like a, um, it has like the black and the brown tweedy bits, if you will, in it. And then it's just kind of a green and yellow over dye. So yeah, I'm so happy about this and um, really excited to find a project to put it all in. It'd be an amazing barber pulled yarn. And um, I've been thinking about spinning for a larger project, like I said, but maybe like a child size sweater. And so I don't have to worry about all of my yarn being consistent for, you know, 
a thousand grams, 1500 grams. I don't have to worry about that so much. Um, maybe not a thousand grams, <laughs> maybe a thousand yards or 1500 yards. So yeah, I just want to share this with you because it's so fun and so inspiring. Um, the hedgehog fibers fiber is super inspiring to me just because it has so much color and texture and it's very imaginative. So yeah, I was really happy about this. And I'm not gonna show you the other bag because frankly, it's very similar in terms of just the pops of color, the saturation, um, the kind of fiber bases. And so I'll spare you. <laughs> you can see it again when I actually spin it up. But other than that, that's all I've been crafting on this week. Um, yeah, this, this coming week, I actually, oh, I almost forgot to tell you. Um, I don't know if you'd seen that Stephen West released his mystery knit along for 2020. I think it's called Slip, Sliptastic, what's it called? Slipstravaganza, <laughs> gosh. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so I don't know if you noted, if you saw that he just released his mystery net along for 2020. I believe it begins on August 9th. And um, the pattern, you know, what's required, the yarn recommendations, that has all been released in kind of like the pre release to the pattern. So if you purchase the pattern, um, you'll receive, I think, four weeks of um, pattern updates. And so. The uh, first PDF that you can download is actually just all of his recommendations for yarn and colors and all that. So I'm so excited. I'm definitely dedicating October to this mystery knit along because the last one I, I tried texture time, I hated the colors. I don't wanna say I hated, they just weren't my colors that I loved to knit with. They were kind of softer, they weren't as vibrant. Um, and so it just wasn't a really inspiring project for me. And so uh, since that last pattern, I felt like I kind of failed at it. <laughs> it's okay, it just, it wasn't happening and it just is what it is. But this year I am determined to finish this mystery knit along. I'm so excited. I think it's going to be just really different than some of his other, um, MCALs and I'm actually going to be dying up two different kits, uh, a few of each in case any of you are interested. I'll be um, posting those on my shop update next Friday. And so, yeah, I'm really excited. So I'd love to hear from you in the comments if you are going to be taking part in this MCAL as well. It is kind of a sprint, <laughs> to be honest. Um, I feel like maybe it's just me, maybe it's the actual like smallish amount of time that I have to knit, but I have to focus on one of his projects at a time, one of his mystery knit alongs at a time if I'm going to finish before, not before the end, but keep up with every uh, one fourth of the pattern he releases or one fifth, however many um, sections of the pattern he releases at a time. It's a lot of knitting. It's fun though. It's fun and it's challenging. His patterns are awesome. He's a great designer. So yeah, that's what I am going to be focusing on in the month of October. And so I want to finish up my coastal pullover before I start that. So I want to kind of clear, clear my knitting, clear my weaving. Everything needs to be cleared out before I start this shawl. Yeah, I'll keep you updated. I'll show you what kit I choose to use for myself. And if you're interested in what kits I will have available, I would recommend checking out my shop update video for next week because I will be showing you the kits that will be available. Other than that, that is it for this week. Thank you so much for joining me. If you like the podcast, I'd love if you give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Um, it helps push the video out to those of us who love to knit and have other people join our community. But until next time, I hope you have an awesome day. Bye.